Sup guys, Joe, Dex and Drafts. I want to do a real quick tournament report because uh, I just did my first skirmish with Channel Fireball, which was super fun. I got my butt handed to me super hard, but that's okay. I went two, four, and one. I rocked out Azalea. Oh, yeah, I rocked out Azalea. That's what, she, that's what we got. Uh, and I went red line. Bam! Um, I figured I would do a little bit of, hey, here's what I learned with her. I'm trying to figure out what to make, how to make her viable, and I I've got a couple ideas for the next time. So I want to bring you on this little journey with me. Uh, as far as the beer today, I didn't really want to drink because I had two during the tournament. So I'm bringing back the old beer stot, and we're just doing a prost pilsner. Nice and simple. Um, when you just when you when you don't want beer, have a pilsner. <laughs> it's probably not true. Um, but you know, it's part of the channel. It's just the thing I do. So let's 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 get this guy in here and get this thing going. Um, not a great pour, and I don't really care. Um, so yeah, I went two, four, and one. Uh, I won my first game, uh, which was super awesome. Uh, I'm I'm doing. I went Azalea Tall basically. I'm going to show you the deck. Uh, Azalea Tall went uh, won the first one against Kano. Kano had a couple bad rolls. Uh, let's just let's go with that. The RNG was not was not in his favor, but I did take twelve to the face. Um, and uh, courtesy of a command and conquer, which uh, killed off an Irina's prayer, which was really funny to see against a Kano. I was a fan of that because um, that card is worthless uh, unless you're up, up against magic. Um, but yeah, so I tried the dominate thing and uh, I was able to pull that one off courtesy again of some of some crappy RSG or on his part. Um, four games. I mean, the, the next two were super slugfest. Like I had four games that were down to three health. Um, I can't feel bad about that. I really can't. Uh, those are those were pretty awesome. Um, I had one game against another Azalea that just I don't know how. I don't want to say the deck was stacked, but I don't know how you can have a better hand. Uh oh, come on, my uh, let's go. My poor uh, my poor camera thinks that it's uh, that I'm really far away. Let's try to fix this. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm back. You probably noticed a quick jump. That's because the the camera got super blurry all of a sudden. I apologize for that. Anyway, um, one deck uh, I played against in another Azalea. I don't know how you can get a more perfect three turns than that was. He was pitching all of his pumps. He had all of his search. I get hit with the three biggest uh, arrows that Azalea has, um, and they were all super powered, and I can only block with one thing, and it screwed up my whole next turn, and I just, it was, you, nobody wins that. Um, you just, you just can't. Um, so that was really unfortunate. Same thing against Dorinthia. Um, wasn't as stellar. I at least got to get a couple damage in, but, uh, again, it was that first, first turn, just perfect draw, wonderful RNG. Um, that happens. It happens. Uh, and then the last one against Wizard, and you'll see a card in the deck and wonder like, why the hell is that in the deck? And it super saved my ass. Oh, well, I already told you it's Irina's prayer. Um, man, that bailed me out of a jam. Uh, I was really proud of that one. Um, but anyway, let me, um, let me show you the deck and show you what I learned. Cause like I said, I wanted to go Azalea tall. I'm trying to figure out like, how do we make Azalea work? And one of the things I, i I realized is that Azalea dominate is just not reliable. Not to say that Azalea tall is bad. It's just, it's so inconsistent. And I think that's more Azalea's problem, um, is, is a really crappy consistency. The issue that she currently has is that she doesn't have anything that's super powerful, um, it's really cheap, but it's easy to kind of get through and you really need her ability to do dominate where you can only block with one card. So chances are you're going to hit, you really need that to work, um, in order for this, in order for her to, to do any kind of real damage or you go super wide. And at that point you still need to build up a great hand, uh, and a great board state to go swing, 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 swing. So I've got some ideas, but let me show you the deck that I played with. Um, also, I'm going to drink a beer. Mm. Okay. So, um, Azalea started off. I'm going to lower this. You might see the phone in the camera. Um, there we go. Um, so, Azalea, I did go Redliner. Uh, Redliner with Dominate is just super useful. I actually am starting to like the idea of Death Dealer um, and do a decent mixture of wide and tall. I don't know if you can just go one unless you get really lucky like my game five and just slaughter anybody, but that's that's not consistent to over a, of a long over a long tournament. So I'm not entirely sure how I feel about Redliner. It's super useful because you get to you get to stack the deck. Um, 
but then you get to use Azalea's ability. With that, the Death Dealer forces you to draw a card, so whatever you stacked with like an opt or something, that doesn't really help you. Um, so I might switch this over to Death Dealer. Skullbone Crosswrap, because of course Skullbone Crosswrap. When is it not Skullbone Crosswrap? Fucking fantastic for, uh, for Azalea. It is, it is so good. Um, Snapdragon Scalers, uh, target action card with one or less gets go again. I might change this given some of the changes I have in the deck. I don't know why I change it too. There's not really a lot of good, but I know. Um, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Bullseye Bracers, also great. Um, basically gives you a reload and a go again. Always nice for Azalea given that she can only really work inside of the, uh, inside of the arsenal. Um, Fiendles, because of course Fiendles. Uh, these, this is, that was my normal board state. That's that's pretty much what you could expect from me on a regular basis. There's my uh, there's my equipment. Um, that's normal. That's that's that was pretty typical. Worked pretty decently. Um, I definitely used the crap out of the equipment, which was nice. Um, Iron Rock Gauntlet for 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 uh, you know posterity. Death Dealer, pretty decent again. Um, I, I might I might switch. Hope's Merchant Hood. Um, shuffle any number of cards in the hand into the deck. I don't know why I would ever really do this over, um, Skull, Skullbone, but it's, it, there, I might, I might try something. Uh, Iron Rot Legs, Arcane Barrier, and then good old Opt, um, to round that out. Okay, as far as the, uh, as far as the deck itself, two red in the ledgers, uh, always fantastic, being able to make it so they can only do one action next turn if this hits. Uh, this is, this is really one of the big staples of a control Azalea. Um, is I'm going to make it so you can't completely block this bad boy, and then you only get to take one action next turn. Neat. That was fun. Mm. Sleep Dart. More controlly stuff. Against people like Dash, totally worth it. Against Reinar? <laughs> Sorry. Um, also, I found this to be useful against Kano. If you have any thoughts on this one, I'm trying to figure out which I like more between Sleep Dart and, uh, and Red in the Ledger against Kano. I kind of like Sleep Dart because it really screws their whole turn, um, which they can always just kind of go against you this turn, but um, at least uh, they can do the same here and maybe hold something like a, like a potion or something. Um, so I don't know. I'm still working on the two. Maybe, maybe it's the exact same thing. Couldn't tell you. Uh, hamstring shot. This was actually more useful than I gave it credit for, especially when I was dealing with Reinar. Um, I got him down to two. I felt really proud of that. Um, and the hamstring shot did some work, especially when everything is three cost, making that four is suddenly you have to pitch another card. Um, that's, that's not fun. Uh, I have three of those, um, but we're going to talk about some of these in just a sec. Uh, oh, I had four of those because it was a big thing. Searing shot. It's there as a freebie. Um, that's really what it was kind of there for. Of like, hey, I've kind of ex exhausted a whole bunch of things, but you're pretty exhausted too. Hi, Luna. Um, this is a nice one of like, hey, I don't really need anything to do it. I just load it up and send it on its way. Uh, I dug that a little bit. Ridge Rider Shot. Why the hell would I have Ridge Rider Shot? This was literally for the opt. Um, being able to use the opt part of this was fantastic. Uh, so the idea is that you redliner. So you have redliner. Use it to throw in a Ridge Rider Shot. Opt. Um, and then swap that in. So it's basically, it's basically the cross, the cross wrap. It's the cross wrap. Um, I dug that. I actually put three in, um, for that. Ravenous Rabble. I love Ravenous Rabble. Ravenous Rabble was awesome. Ravenous Rabble is especially great if you play Ridge Rider Shot into the arsenal and, uh, opt and don't like what you have, you opt it under, then you Ravenous Rabble, and then you see what what you opted to. And if you get lucky, then you Azalea to swap in and it comes in as the second attack. This was a super useful combo. Um, I used it just about every game and it was really helpful. Um, <clears throat> had a bunch of those. Headshot, man, I don't know how, I, I mean, I like headshot. It's a big, it's a big swing. It is a big swing. Um, and that's about it. That's it. Cute. I had three of those. And the Sarrow. This came up, I got to do this like once or twice, uh, the endless arrow trick, um, where you send off endless arrow, you hit, it comes back to hand, then you basically pop equipment so you can play it again, and then you hit, it comes back to hand, you throw in the arsenal. Uh, it was okay. It was okay. Um, that was really trying to swing wide, and again, I wasn't really trying to do that with Azalea. Um, so, but it, 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 had, it had its moments. 
Um, poison the tips. I got to use this once, and it was super useful against Kano. Like, Kano got shredded with this card. Um, and, and that was nice. Uh, but other than that, it wasn't, it wasn't terribly useful. But, I don't know, with what I'm, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Knock the Death Whistle. Fucking perfect card. One of the best cards in Azalea. One of the best supers in the game, in my opinion. Um, at least that's that's specific to a class. Um, she's just wonderful. So, basically, set up Azalea so you can use her effect. Huzzah. All right, getting out of actions for a sec. Take aim. Uh, so, a couple take aims. Three take aims. Um, so, that way I can increase the power of things. Reload. Go again. Make stuff beefy. Super useful. If I do pull off the Azalea, then that red in the ledger is suddenly eight. Um, have fun. Enjoy. Increase the tension. This actually saved my ass once. Um, I was able to get a swing in, and all he had was he was ready to he was ready to go defense reaction crazy with me, and uh, that that didn't that didn't help. Um, I dug that. That was cool. I was a fan of that. Take covers. You know, I got to use the I did use these twice. That was super useful. It saved me a couple damage. Um, but the reload didn't help. Actually, I might pull, I might switch these out for sink, uh, sink belows. Um, but it was, it was nice to have defense reactions. I also have some other tricks up my sleeve that I'm going to share in a sec. Nimbleism, always great. Um, I mean, that's what you do when you go tall. What is the cheapest way that you can beef up a card, especially one that you can only block with one with dominate, you know, one card with dominate. You, you, you play nimbleism and then suddenly that red legend is 11 or, or whatever. Um, I got to fire for an 11. It was cool. Uh, he took, like, eight of it. I felt good. No, I think it was against Dorinthia. He took nine off of... It wasn't a red in the ledger, though. Whatever. I hit somebody for nine in one turn. That's a good arrow. That's some Legolas shit right there. Irena's Prayer. I felt really bad about holding on to this card, especially given three games it was complete... Or, like, basically six games it was completely worthless. But the one against Kano, he plays a Sonic Boom on me as his last card which would have rocked my frickin' world, and I Irina's prayer and stopped the whole thing, and his whole turn is wasted, and I felt so good. And I was like, yay. I have two. I don't know how I like having two. I feel like this is kind of a silver bullet. Um, so two is too much. Two is too much. It's probably gonna go. Sigil of Solace. I've started to like these more than I like most defense reactions, um, just because you never know what's gonna come at you. Saved my butt a couple times. Raise a reflex. Same idea. Beef things up, beef things up, beef things up. I totally misplayed and forgot that it gives go again. That was my fault. But I, I, I burned my boots, completely spacing that this gave go again. Oops. But anyway, super useful. Energy potion. Never actually used this. I thought, I thought, like, because the issue that I was having, like, if I, if I defend with something, I was really low on cards. And everything cost at least one. So energy potion would have been neat. Uh, I never used it. It's going away. And then Remembrance. This is not going away. I need another one. The end. Get three action cards back. I never actually used the damn card, though, but uh, I don't care, because I, I, it was fantastic. Just being able to get the knocks back, and the reds back, and the nimbleisms, even. Uh, super useful. You'll notice there's no Remorseless, the other big card in the game. I don't have those. I just don't. Um, so the idea... Uh, was really to try, to try to swing tall. So try to set up those turns where, you know, I can come in with Red in the Ledger and just just beef it to high heaven. Um, and then the next turn sucks for them, and, and then we go. Here's the problem that I had. Here's what I noticed with Azalea, and it's what I see with most Azalea decks. This was neat and all, but it wasn't consistent worth shit. And again, consistency is an issue with Azalea. So this this was great, unless it was perfect. It was it didn't it wasn't as much it wasn't as crushing as I wanted it to be. And I actually noticed that with a lot of the cards that I had, um, I had a lot of I had a lot of attacks that I I had, and I just didn't want to swing. I just didn't really feel in like. I didn't feel like so many of these were going to do anything. Um, and they were just like, 
I, I'm going to use him for pitch. It's nice to just have the attack. It keeps them going, but it doesn't really help Azalea's engine because they're so freaking weak. Um, and actually, not the rabble. Um, so, like, hamstring shot, super useful, but not the four. Um, wasn't a big... Uh, uh, the searing shots were cute. Like, I never... I, I feel like we just... I was just hurting myself. I gave too much away to get very little in. And it wasn't enough that they couldn't just, they just take it. And then, you know, so they're screwed a little bit. And then the next turn I get walloped for a billion. I burn my whole hand uh, to try to defend it. And then I've got to rely on the inconsistent R RNG that is Azalea. That sucks. That wasn't useful. So I'm thinking of a few things. I'm thinking, how in the world do we make Azalea consistent? And do we do it by going tall? Do we do it by going wide? Or do we do a mixture of both? And I'm thinking a few things here. Here's here's where I'm at. Um, one of the struggles that I had was that Azalea just kept running out of, she just kept running out of shit. Um, and again, you know, all she can do is, you know, if all you can do is swing out of the arsenal, that means you've got to put an investment in the red liner to get something into the arsenal. Um, it has to be an arrow card, which I mean that's fine. Uh, that's that's not a big that's not a big issue. By putting it face up, you screw over your uh, cross wrap because it only targets the face down stuff. Um, so this is great if and only if I'm able to throw something in the arsenal, which that was kind of 50-50, honestly. Um, like there's there's not as much there wasn't a lot of synergy here, and I'm like, how do we solve some of that? And like I said, I want to try it with. Cons I want to try some of this with a little bit of consistency. I want to try a little. I want to go that route. Um, so here's where I here's here are some of the things that I'm thinking about. Um, first things first, though. Where are you? Um, that needs to happen, and it's probably going to be the yellow. Um, I'm torn between the red and the yellow. Whisper the Oracle. Just straight up do an opt, and 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 stack up for a couple turns. Um, and kind of plan on that, especially if I want to switch over to the death dealer, being able to opt more than one so I can set up for the death dealer draw, um, and then get Azalea. I think that's going to be super useful. Um, on top of that, uh, I really, really regret not using plunder run. Um, and I think one of the things I want to try is going a little wide and then ending tall. Um, so do a couple of hits and then try to make Azalea happen. And I think with enough to opt and Whisper the Oracle and that kind of deck manip, you can pull that off. Um, having things like Plunder Run, uh, where you can uh, where you can draw as a result, just helps, you know, at least helps get a little more in hand. Um, things like being able to get the, uh, the plus three when it goes in, I think that's super useful. Uh, so I'll have to add in a little bit more reload and whatnot. Um, but I think if I can get some draw in here, uh, then I might actually be able to play more things in the arsenal and, uh, and whatnot. Um, this one I'm pondering. Here's, here's where it gets a little spicy. Lead the charge. I know lead the charge. I get it. Um, why? Lead the charge, you know, I've never seen lead the charge used anywhere. Next time you play an action card with cost zero or greater this turn, gain an action point. I might use the yellow to make it one because everything is one or zero. Um, and then go again. Thing about stuff like this is is having those extra action points to be able to play kind of other cards, other you know other events, other other shit. Um, super useful, especially if I have two arrows in my hands. If I got one in the arsenal, so if I like take aim, reload, put one in the arsenal, fire that. Unless I give it go again somehow, I'm kind of screwed. Um, and I'm sitting with a hand of arrows to do things with, and I probably haven't even done the azalea nonsense yet. Um, I like the idea of lead the charge and I might give it a shot. Additionally, just to make it even more interesting, I'm thinking about snatch. Um, which if you say that by itself and throw the rest of the uh, rest of the video away, I'm a really dirty human being. Um, but I am I am checking up I am I'm all about that snatch. Uh, <laughs> um, if it hits, draw a card. If I lead the charge or plunder run with it, I draw cards. Uh, well, I get uh, this just lets me go again. Um, but if this hits, um, 
<clears throat> I get to draw a bunch of cards. If I do things, you know, if I'm sitting on the Snapdragon scalers, um, as an example, I get to draw, I get to go again, and I get to try to kind of keep the engine going. Um, so like I said, what I'm thinking about trying to make happen, what I'm trying to make happen, is do a couple of these where Azalea really just kind of builds up some nonsense, where she, where she just kind of goes, where are you? She does a couple normal things that doesn't require her to sit in the arsenal and deal with that arrow shenanigans. Um, if these can do go again, I mean, Snatch is kind of iffy. I'm still, I'm going to have to play test with that one. Uh, but if it goes again, if we can do, you know, if we can get into that, then not only do I get to fire with arrows or I get to try to, you know, maybe whisper the Oracle and do Azalea shenanigans at the end of the turn after two or three attacks, um, which is really powerful. Uh, but I also get to end with cards in my hand. Um, like, I've even been pondering, I've been pondering, um, where are you? I think this is going too far. I think this is too much. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I've also been thinking about Art of War. I've been pondering Art of War as well. Um... So pitch one, card you control, plus one, and you know, plus one plus attack. The next ac uh, action attack card you play this turn gains go again. So again, super useful for things like the snatch and whatnot. Um, and then I can banish two, I can banish an attack card, and if you do, draw two cards. So I'm like thinking, like, if I do these two, if I do number two and number four on this, I get to go again, I get to draw a bunch of cards, I get to just keep this train going, and then, again, like I said, try to set up an opt turn try to get something where i can reload try to get something in the arsenal so the last attack after a few is actually an azalea bomb um it's a super tricky fucking pilot for sure um but i'm playing with that idea i'm, I'm playing with it also when i'm doing things like you know if i do whisper the oracle it opens up stuff like potions i don't know if it's gonna be a time snap potion um but that'd be kind of funny um, sadly, there's not anything that gives you draw, but things like Potion of Strength would be super useful. Um, pop in, be like, hey, I popped in some Potions of Strength, I get extra turns, I'm drawing like crazy. Th that might be a little too much, but I think that's the way I want to go. I think that's what I want to try to pull off, and I'm hoping between draw and opt, I can make that a little bit more consistent, where it's not nearly as many arrow attacks. Like, the arrow attacks are really to set her up for the one big freaking arrow um, that we want to do with all of this this nonsense. Um, and, and kind of make her more of a, of a, of a close-quarters combat archer with kind of one little um, at the tail end for good measure. So I will come back to you. It's going to be what I try for the next one on um, next Saturday with Lucky Gaming. Um, I'm going to try this approach, but I'll let you know how it goes. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Um, I think Azalea is getting a bad rap, uh, and it's because she's getting a bad rap, uh, bad rap. And, uh, I want to try to figure out how, what, what's her secret? What is really her secret? Um, I don't think going wide or tall, even a weird blend, um, when it's convenience is good because I just don't see it being consistent. Um, I got shredded against the other Azalea from the perfect hand, but that was on game five when I was one and three and one, which is basically one and four. Like the guy won once at least, um, but I mean, he definitely didn't win more than two. So that's that's not consistent, even though I got destroyed. So that's, that's, that's where I'm at. So that's how I did, two, four, one, not great. 81st out of the 92 that stuck around. So, you know, all of this idea, goofy shit, don't take it from somebody who actually is good at this game. I'm still learning. Um, but I do love trying to figure out real big conundrums. If you have any thoughts on Azalea, um, I would love to hear them. I would love to, uh, I'd love to chat. Let's, uh, let's figure that out. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, all those things. I've got, I've got so much more beer, but I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to make you watch this because I actually still have, there's still plenty. This is only a 10 ounce, this is only a 10 ounce class. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, shoot me a comment, shoot me a message, and let me know what, what azaleas have been working for you. And, and 
are they consistent? That's the uh, that's the real that's the real kicker. And can we solve that problem? Because uh, that's what everybody else has, right? Ninja, Dorinthia, they're all just using their weapons over and over, so they're super consistent because they always got something to do. Hmm. Anyway, cheers, mates. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you uh, probably later this week. I got two more box openings for Welcome to Wraith. So, till next time, y'all.